Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we are going to build a preset called Radio 4. I suppose you have watched the animation and the demonstration to know what kind of function it's supposed to achieve so that I don't need to spend extra time in this tutorial to explain how it will work. Another thing is that due to the complexity of this preset, I will only teach you a simplified version of this preset. If you want to have a perfect copy of the preset, you can go to the description and download the preset library that I have. I highly recommend you to take a look with the demonstration video about the preset library release. Uh, it may contain important information that how it works and so on. So let's go. So to make a radio fall, we first need to have a grid. So distribute the matrices. And I'm going to select the node here, W goes to data input and take an integral input for to control the X and Y division. And let's take a 3D viewer to look at its vectors. Then we have a very dense mesh. Uh, you can also change all these width and length, but I'm going to change the steps so that they distribute more widely. They separate further. So now we have a grid, and then we need to apply a radio fold. And the principle of the radio fold is actually very easy. So here we have a float math, and I'm going to use a formula which is called a arc tangent b divided by a so what are these arc tangent do is if you um, put two value for example y and x so let's separate vector so here we're going to separate the vectors and we put the y onto the a and x into the b then it will actually calculate the the the, uh, the radius so it probably will start from here and it will run a 360 degree and calculate its angle. So here we have a 90 degree, and here we have a 180 degree, and here we have a 270 degree, and finally it goes back to 360 degree. But you also realize this is also at the same time, which is the zero degree. So it basically runs a circle, which is actually the radio fall that we are going to have. So as you can see, now we actually input all these vectors in. So it will firstly evaluate. So it actually it has a kind of internal loop because you can actually see all these nodes are vectorized that can receive the plural input. So it will firstly go with the first point, and you can see all oh, it evaluates. It's uh, maybe at um, 300 degree, and it will evaluate the second point, which is probably um, 300. 301 degree and uh, 302, 303, and so on and so forth. Uh, after evaluating all the points, there's a, a value, a, a degree which is assigned to each of the vectors. So it's a, a kind of. So here, what we can potentially do is if you put a a da, 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 what's that called? So it's not a customized form. Yes, a custom form. Custom form. Yes, this custom fourth will actually receive multiple inputs and generate a fourth to each of these vectors. Uh, so here, let's take the offset matrices. So let's put the fourth into, and uh, actually we can put an offset vector. It does not actually matter which one actually goes. So let's put just put the matrices into. So here, let's uh, do the functions. So and now, if we see the new matrices that has been generated from these offset matrices, you can see there is a helical strand that has been gone down. And uh, you can see actually, so it starts from here as a uh, as a zero and the three hundred uh, as the kind of borderline between the zero and the three hundred sixty degrees, and some of the value goes down and some of the value goes up. And actually, in this case, we already have our radio fold. So this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll probably see you next time. Just kidding. So remember that we are going to make that into a preset. So there are several things I would like to do. Uh, the, the, my design for our, my radio fold uh, is that I input a vector list or matrix list. So here, let's take a group input. Uh, and by the way, as you can see, all these um, all these nodes are vectorized, so I can use a group input instead of a loop.
So let's just uh, take the vectors into the place. And again, this is a simplified version, so I'm only going to do work with the x, y plane. So now we have taken a vectors. It's also possible that you take a matrices. So in this case, let's just make a just to give you kind of a rough idea about how to choose between matrices list and vector list. If I take matrix list, and I'm going to use the method that I have been discussing in the past about the uh, spline formation. So get list length. So this this get list length will actually output uh, zero or the the list length. So if the its output is known, it means um, this checkbox will not be ticked. So it means off. Then it will goes to false. So if there's no input in the matrix list, then you're going to use the vectors. However, if the if you input anything to the matrix list, then you will use this matrix list. So in this case, you can actually have these two kind of input at the same time. And I'm going to put this. Uh, oh yeah, uh, another thing that you need to be aware that once. All oh, right. Another thing that you need to aware is uh, once you put a matrices in the true, the second socket will also be forced into the matrix. I probably don't want this happen, so let's do this reverse. So this vector will go into the list and will determine. So if I input anything to the vectors, then it will actually use the vectors. So now we can go back to the output and the vectors. So this is the way that uh, you can decide whether to use vectors or matrices. Uh, kind of a simple tricks. And the next step that we need to consider is that I'm going to output a fourth because the whole point of the design is to make it a say fourth. So let's put the fourth into the output. And we're going to delete the rest. So now if we, I hit E and select the network, I can remove that. Let's rename that as a radio for of tutorial. And you can invoke this node. So here we have a super simplified version of this radio for. And if I input a matrices, and put the matrices in offset the matrices, fourth into fourth. You can see it gives the same result, which means our preset is actually working in this case, which is very nice, very nice. But here, what you can also see is that uh, our offset matrices is assigned to an increase in height. However, the actual movements of all these vectors are not working the way I want. Uh, because there are some matrices that has been moved on, moved down. This is because uh, this evoke subprogram, uh, uh, this fourth or this the the output for this arc tangent actually gives a negative values. So if the fourth goes to a negative value, so if everything is one, then everything has been moved up. But if you type a negative one, then everything moves down, which is offset to the translation that you input. Kind of idea. So when you have a negative four, sometimes you just get a kind of uh, display, uh, positive and a negative displacement at the same time. Sometimes this may be what you want. Sometimes this may not be what you want. Personally speaking, I would like to remap everything into the from the zero to one range. And now here I'm going to use a remap range, uh, the map range node. And you also have an option of interpolate. So here, the basic idea is these outputs from the arc tangent. So firstly, you can see it does. It's not a 90, 180 as I said earlier. Is it because it's used the uh, it's used the the unit of radius uh, in which uh, 180 equals to pi. 
and the 90 equals to half of pi, something like that, as you know. So in this case, technically speaking, its range should go from the negative pi to pi. So now we actually remapped everything to 0 to 1. So here, what you just need to do is just to define the output minimum and the maximum, because who knows how you are going to use these whatever functions. And I'm going to interpolate everything. So this is one part of the idea. However, uh, although we don't see the errors, so usually this is good enough. There are some cases where sometimes there is kind of bugs or for unknown reason that the this remap range is actually not correct. I don't actually know why, honestly speaking. Uh, but I, I really actually don't know. So in my preset, in my version of preset, I made another preset to so he, uh, it, the basic principle is actually very simple. So there is a sort. There is a sort. So if you put the values in, uh, what the sort does, it will just uh, basically range this number from the minimum to the maximum. Okay. So what you can actually see, the minimum number is negative 3.09. It makes sense because you didn't actually start from the, the most the center point. But if you try to change the values, like the uh, kind of even number where there's a, uh, actually it does not work as well. <laughs> um, but uh, so if you have the point which is right in the middle, then probably you will reach the uh, neg negative pi. But if there is even a little bit offset, then the degree of, of course should not be negative pi. So sometimes um, for unknown reason that this, the the smallest number may be very low. So sometimes you ha can actually have a, a very huge offset depending on what you're actually working with. So if you, you take it up to 500, you can actually see that our point has been lifted up. And uh, maybe sometimes you are not satisfied with such kind of remapping because maybe you wanted to start from the most of button for whatever reasons. So here we're just going to make another preset which actually got uh, get a minimum and a maximum. And as you can see, it's actually basically just a two sort to sort the as you can see it's basically just the two uh, sort node within a group node. So let's build this preset very quickly. So let's take a group node. So let's take a group input. Uh, I would like to change the color because I'm tired with red all the time these days. So let's change that to whatever whatever color. But uh, this is for your own preference. Just to notice, you need to change this network color. So here we're going to put the first sort. So into the input, we're going to use the same float list input. So we put one number into the sort, and we're going to get list element. which is nice. So here we're getting the smallest number using this node. And let's just name that as um, get, get, get minimum, maximum tutorial. So now, and we're going to take an output nodes to output these values. So if we take a look with this element, you can see it's the smallest number. So how about the largest number? It's possible that it just to take an invert list. Oh no, reverse list actually. And we're going to get this element. Now we have a minimum, and then we have a maximum.
and basically that's all about it. So it's possible that you put this minimum to the minimum and the maximum into the maximum. So you, for whatever reasons, you just start from the most button and then you range from the highest output. But uh, actually this is not a real. So if you are looking for, really looking for reality, you should actually use negative pi to pi. But uh, some other times you may use the minimum and the maximum that you got using this node. Either way that you prefer, you can even take a switch to say, oh, whether I would like to use the pi or this node or whatever things. Who knows? Uh, in fact, if unless you in, in unless your value goes super high, otherwise it's probably not visible by our eyes. People won't actually realize there is actually such an issue. But sometimes it can be actually prominent. So you have to really consider about such kind of issues. So here just uh, some side notes about uh, this this group node which is called a uh, gate minimum and the maximum. I made this because I I forgot the actual reason. I think it was the time that I was building the animatable M tree for such a kind of node for whatever dumb reason. But sometimes I I may potentially think I would like to know the indices as well for whatever reasons. So you just put the indices into the sockets and the minimum indices. This is and you can basically do the same thing reverse the list, put the indices into and the reverse the list into get list elements, put that and the maximum in the C so the principle of rotation is actually super super simple. So here, if you take a look with this setup, we are having one matrices, output to offset matrices, and the other matrices is used to evaluate. These are two matrices. And what we are actually doing is to evaluate our matrices. For example, this is the first point that we're going to evaluate. And we are getting a value of zero, probably. And then we assign a fourth to this point and we are, uh, evaluate the second point, the third point, the fourth point. And this order will never be changed, which actually means that if you take a look with the offset matrices, and I'm hitting you, goes to the global axis and global pivot, and offset these matrices, goes to the rotation. If I'm rotating this plane, then it will actually rotate the fourth. Why it works is because the plane for the evaluation has been rotated. So originally it's like this kind of a plane, but now I rotate this. So the value, the value for the arc tangent has actually been changed. But what has not been changed is the order of the input. So it will still put the, the a different value for this point. And it will give so you will evaluate this point and give it a value for probably now it's like the 1 or 10, who, who knows, it gives a value of 10, and it will input back to the location because the the plane for the offset has not been changed. So it causes kind of um, difference, it's kind of a trick. And if you would like to rotate this entire plane within the preset, so it's rather simple, then you just take a uh, the transform vector. And then take an axis rotation matrix. And uh, because we are working on X, Y plane, so you need to rotate on Z. And just take an angle, and then you got the rotation, which is very, very cool. And this is basically kind of idea. And also be aware that the X, Y order actually does not really matter. You can put X on the top and Y on the button. The only difference, as you can see, originally it probably starts from here, I remember, but uh, now it starts from here. But the rest is actually the same. The fourth is still working in the way, and uh, it does not actually change the difference between clockwise and non-clockwise. So you don't necessarily worry anything about the, the order of input into the arc tangent. It's more kind of a preference which one you like to do, who knows. 
Um, and what you need to realize is currently what we, whatever we are working is on an XY plane. So which means if you are working on the XZ plane, you can see the fourth is actually not what we are looking for. So how can we actually get that onto different plane? It actually means you have to duplicate this node tree for several times, which is actually a little bit of manual work. Uh, it's basically from the uh, let me think, let me think. From the, from the arc tangent to the custom fourth, you need to duplicate it for several times. So let's duplicate that. And then we are going to change another equation. Maybe this time it's y and z, or y and z. And again, order does not really matter. So now we get a different fourth. And then we need to decide which form to actually use. Give you a hint, which is it's called a create form list. So we have the first form, which is for x y plane. The second form is for the y z plane, which is vertical. And we can use a get list element to decide if the index is zero, then it means the first form. If the index is one, then it's the second form, and so on and so forth. So this is the way that you work with three planes, okay? So now we are on index, which is one. So if we change that to Y and Z, then you can see the fourth will start to work again. So you can move on, I think, uh, X. Then now we have uh, the X, Y, fourth on another plane. And you will realize it is no longer rotate on the Z direction. It actually gives kind of interesting result, but I don't think this is what you're looking for. Hey, wait a second, this is actually very interesting. Huh? Yeah, it, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, kind of bumpy, I, I, don't, I don't know how to describe, but anyway. But uh, this is not probably what you're looking for. Uh, so you have, you can, you need to change that to X plane to rotate. So in such a case, what you also need to do is just duplicate this for several times, create a matrix list, and get this element. Still the same. That's why this, the principle of this entire preset is actually not hard, but uh, to make it co as complete as the, my radio 4, it actually a little bit of a lot of work. Uh, not a, a lot of work, but a lot of duplication, because you have to consider about all three planes. But this is basically idea. So finally, here's one more thing that I would like to remind you. Uh, because sometimes, I, I don't know how you are actually working with this video fourth. However, there is a case that's which is kind of important to actually realize. So let's take everything back to the index zero. Okay. So maybe, because in the past I've talked about the fourth visualizer. So I'm not going to take a plane enlarge this plane and subdivide that for maybe 100 times a very dense plane actually 100 times is too much anyway uh, and we're going to VC transition loop this is a fourth visualizer take this plane and use the vertex color put the fourth into fourth and then we are going to use the object to mesh data to take the vectors. And if we're taking a look with the viewer and use our help material, where we already set the vertex color into the emission, then it's supposed to have kind of showing what a kind of result. And you can see it does not actually work in a, in a works way, which is very bad. But previously, we know our radio fault is working function uh, fun should function perfectly. But what's wrong in this case? Technically speaking, I don't actually know the reason why it doesn't work. Uh, I really don't. But just to say, if you would like to fix this problem, you should use the polygon uh, polygon transition loop. It's basically the same principle, just a different mode of this set vertex color node. So if you put a vertex color, I don't know. If you put multiple colors, 
then you can actually choose the mode which is the vertex color or the polygon color so if I delete these things and uh, use this so now I have basically how it works almost perfectly fine there are a little bit of errors but uh, a little bit hard to say um, I don't know sometimes why it actually works but it just like you get you kind of idea so visualizer may not be a very good way to work with that but uh, I don't know it, this is just uh, something that you need to think about when you're using that but it does not mean your fourth is actually wrong it's just um, in this particular case there is some weird issue that I haven't found out the reason yet but the only thing I can say is polygon mode of this set of vertex color will be better than other modes for whatever reasons that you can potentially think about but uh, anyway so this is basically all about it um, enjoy the preset or whatever stuff who knows I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time bye bye